Hello everyone, my name's Ayla Bell and welcome to part 5 of Miraculous Bonds Beyond Fate, my Miraculous Ladybug AU with a different origin story and different other things too. If this video is your first exposure to Bonds Beyond Fate, then please check out the story from the beginning. Return for part 5 when you are ready. For everyone else, sit back, relax, hit that like button for the algorithm, subscribe for more reviews, rants, and rewrites, put an herb emoji in the comments, and enjoy Miraculous Bonds Beyond Fate Part 5. After the first half of the school day had finished, Marinette, Alia, Nino, and Adrian were preparing to go to lunch. Before all the students had exited the room, Adrian caught up to Chloe and put a friendly hand on her shoulder. Hey Chloe, wanna come eat with us? Upon hearing his invitation, Mari and her group of friends all cringed in anticipation. Chloe brushed off his hand and spoke with a slightly embittered tone. Sorry, Adrikins, I have to stay behind for tutoring with Miss Bustier. Tutoring? Oh yes, I'm fabulous in many things, but mathematics is a thorn in my side. I personally think I'm too pretty and rich to deal with it, but alas, Daddy says that won't get me my diploma. I personally think that's utterly ridiculous, but it's fine. Mari and her friends breathe a sigh of relief. Adrian, however, looks disappointed. Aw, that's too bad. You know, I can always give you some tips when we get home. That is, if you need it. Math is actually one of my strongest subjects. Of course it is, Adrikins. You're perfect, after all. Chloe couldn't help but give an amused, lopsided smile. A bit embarrassed, Adrian told her, We've been through this, Chloe. I'm not perfect which is exactly what a perfect person would say since they're perfectly humble. Adrian sheepishly scratched the back of his head. Anyway, go off and eat with your losers. I'll see you in our next class. She gestured her hand in a shooing motion. Feeling a bit awkward, Adrian frowned and looked off to the side. Hey, Chloe, they aren't losers, they're my friends. Chloe's eyes narrowed as she thought to herself, you just met them, how can they be your friends? And then she said out loud, Whatever, I don't have time for this. She turned towards their teacher and perked up. Miss Bustier, I'm ready for our lesson. She began to walk towards the teacher's desk and without turning to face him, Chloe told Adrian, please tell my admirers that I won't be able to join them today. They'll have to eat their meals without me in their presence. Uh, sure, Adrian said. All right, we're done here and I'm hungry. Alia lightly pushed Adrian out of the room and for a moment, Adrian gave Chloe a saddened glance before focusing ahead of him. Once in the hallway, Alia gave him a coy look. You believe us now, right? She literally called us losers to your face. Yeah, I'll have to talk to her about that, Adrian said. Good luck with that one, dude, Nino told him. I tried to make peace with her once and it did not go well. Oh yeah, I remember that, Mari exclaimed. Didn't you give her a tree branch from a tree in the park when we were in third grade? Of course I did, Nino said with a proud look on his face. And why do you look so smug about that? Alia asked. Because it was a good idea. She just didn't understand how poetic it was. Alia, Mari, and Adrian all looked at him skeptically. And I'm guessing you guys don't either. A tree branch, Nino. A tree branch, Alia said. It was me extending an olive branch, you know, the sign for peace. There are olive trees around here? Adrian asked. None that I know of, Mari confirmed. There could have been back then. It was years ago, so the tree might be gone now. Nino was trying really hard to defend his case. I'll admit, it was a cute idea, Nino, but if none of us got it, surely Chloe wouldn't have either. Besides, if I remember correctly, that tree branch had a spider on it, Alia told them. That's part of what made it so cool, Nino exclaimed. I wanted to show her a cool thing I found, Alia continued. And then the spider crawled onto her hand and bit her. It bit her? Did she freak out? Adrian asked. Yeah, it was hilarious, Alia snickered. Marinette sighed. I'm pretty sure that made her hate us even more. Adrian thought to himself, I don't remember if Chloe told me about this or not. I wouldn't be surprised if she did. Nino tried to defend himself. Hey, give me a break, I was eight. Let every nasty thing Chloe does from now on be deemed as Nino's fault, Alia declared. All in favor say aye. Aye, Mari happily agreed. All right, Blondie, what say you? Alia pointed to Adrian who was staring off in a different direction, not paying attention to her. Adrian, are you okay? 
Mari asked with concern. Following his gaze, Mari noticed Adrian looking at Chloe's groupies, who were all standing and chatting amongst themselves, seemingly waiting for something. I'll be right back, Adrian told his friends as he walked toward the fashionable group. Hey guys, Adrian greeted. Oh, hey Adrian, good to see you. Where's Chloe? Yeah, we're starving. She said she'd buy us a big lunch. She also said she bought us tickets to the newest movie premiere and I was kind of hoping to get that today. She told you guys that? Adrian asked. Well, yeah, why else would we be waiting here? Because Chloe's your friend and you enjoy spending time with her? They all laughed at that. Right, of course. We love having her around. This was said with a sarcastic tone. So where is she? These guys, something's up with them. They're her friends, right? They always look so happy when they're around her, Adrian thought to himself. Um, Chloe said she had to be tutored today, so she won't make it to lunch with you guys. There was an audible groan as the members of the group murmured amongst each other with annoyed tones. Aw oh, man, and I skipped breakfast and nutrition today. I knew it was too good to last. I can't believe it's happening again. What's happening again? Adrian asked. Before you came along, Chloe would always refuse to eat lunch with us because she was too busy getting tutored. It was getting hard to believe that she was really that bad at school. But then when you transferred in, she was so enthusiastic to eat with everyone, mainly you. I guess she was really excited to show you off. Seems to me like she finally lost interest in you. That is, if you're the reason why she came with us in the first place, who knows, maybe she really is that bad at school. One of them snickered. <laughs> Maybe if she spent less time on her makeup and more time hitting the books, she wouldn't be so dumb. Without warning, Adrian shoved the person who said that up against the wall and glared at them. Mari, watching from afar, gasped, not knowing what's going on since everything was happening out of earshot. Alia and Nino looked surprised as well, but Mari didn't hesitate to run up to them and investigate. What's going on? What happened? Mari demanded. Adrian? The guy against the wall struggled a bit to break free from Adrian's tight grip. What the heck is your problem, Agrest? Apologize. What? Adrian's voice went cold. I said apologize. Adrian, what did he do? He called Chloe dumb. No one talks about my friend like that. She's supposed to be his friend too. She's supposed to be all of their friends. So why aren't any of you guys saying anything about this? He needs to apologize, right? Adrian. Mari had never seen Adrian like this before. He was normally so composed and gentle. For something to set him off like this, but why? Chloe had insulted her and her friends in front of Adrian and he barely reacted. But this guy insulted Chloe and he's practically ready to get expelled over her. Does Chloe mean that much to him? Mari gently put her hand on his hand that was clutching the guy's collar. She looked up at him with big sympathetic eyes. When Adrian finally looked over and saw her expression, he immediately softened up, unclenched his fist, and stepped away from the guy. His eyes grew wide as he stared down at his trembling hands. I'm... I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to do that. I don't know what came over me. I'm so, so sorry. The group was just looking at him with expressions of fear, concern, and disgust. Uh, he's just tired, Mari exclaimed frantically. Yeah, he's super tired. You can imagine, right? He just started a new school, and then his dad leaves without warning, and then he had to move in with Chloe. That would exhaust anyone, right? After a few moments of silence, and Mari silently praying her quick thinking worked, the group of kids chuckled. Yeah, if I had to move in with Chloe, I'd be pretty hostile too. Honestly, fair enough. Adrian, while still remorseful, unconsciously clenched his fists, which made Marinette nervous. If you guys can't stand Chloe that much, then why do you hang out with her? Alia asked as she and Nino approached the situation. Is it really that hard to guess why? One of the kids asked. Alia sighed. It's because she's rich and happens to be the mayor's daughter, isn't it? I'm not surprised at all, but oddly enough, a bit disappointed. Don't act all high and mighty. Everyone has a price, one of them told her. Maybe, but I have standards, Alia told them. Even Mari spoke up. It's no secret that Chloe isn't exactly my favorite person, but she's still a person who deserves some dignity. If Adrian sees good in her, then I believe it's there as well. Adrian's eyes widened in surprise. Marinette, 
Alia agreed. Exactly. Chloe might be nasty, but you guys are gross. Some of the members of the group looked guilty while others gave Alia a look of spite. Sure would suck if someone were to tell Chloe that you guys only liked her for her money. I wonder what her dad, the mayor, would do, Nino casually said while looking away from them. You wouldn't dare. She wouldn't believe you guys anyway. Alia smirked. Oh, sure. She might not believe us, but she'll believe him. She gestured to Adrian. Checkmate. That shut them right up. Adrian then stepped up to them. You guys will stay away from Chloe from now on. She doesn't need friends like you. What? You can't just tell us to leave her alone. It's not up to you. Regardless of how you define it, Chloe considers us her friends, so it's her choice. Don't you guys have any empathy at all? How would you feel if your brother or sister, cousin, best friend, or whoever was being treated the way you're treating Chloe? You'd react the exact same way Adrian's reacting, Mari lectured. After a few moments, there was a sigh of defeat. So, what'll Chloe do once we're gone? Who's she gonna hang out with? Alia crossed her arms. Do you guys honestly care, or is that the guilt talking? Tch, whatever. And with that, the group dispersed, leaving Adrian and his friends behind. Once the coast was clear, the group of friends gave a deep exhale of relief, as if they'd been holding their breaths the entire time. You know, Agrest, I'm starting to think you might actually be related to Chloe given the amount of drama you just caused, Alia said. He scratched his cheek as his shoulders fell. Sorry. Are you okay, dude? You don't exactly come off as the type to snap like that, Nino asked. Adrian's face reddened. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I just... I don't know. He looked away in embarrassment. He seriously had no idea he was capable of any kind of aggression outside of being a superhero. Well, I think it's understandable. Like Marinette said, we all have people we'd be willing to fight for, so I guess, for you, Chloe is one of them. I don't quite get what you see in her, but I understand the feeling. Nino said all of this while giving Alia a knowing look. She acknowledged his look and gave a small, sheepish smile. I think it's sweet, Marinette told her friends. Adrian didn't expect that reaction. I mean, yeah, it was a bit scary to see you like that, Adrian, but I know you did it from a place of love. I think you can only really react that way when you love someone. If anything, it means you're super reliable. You're as loyal as they come, and that's an excellent trait for a superhero. Both Mari and Adrian's eyes opened wide and their bodies went rigid from her blabbing too much. Is what I'd say if he was a superhero, but he's not, so that sentence didn't make any sense, did it? Mari and Adrian both laughed nervously. Fortunately, neither Alia nor Nino picked up on that super obvious hint. Yeah, he's reliable, but a bit too emotional for a hero, don't you think? Alia added. If he were a hero, a villain could easily take advantage of that, you know? Heroes have to be cool, calm, and collected, like Ladybug and Cat Noir. Ha <laughs> yeah, like Ladybug and Cat Noir. Mari and Adrian continued to chuckle uneasily. Are you guys all right? You're looking a bit pale, Nino noticed. You know what? That's the hunger talking. I'm starving. Are you starving, Adrian? Mari said with an obnoxiously loud voice. Adrian matched her tone. Yeah, I am super hungry. Let's go. The two of them briskly walked toward the dining area. A bit confused, Nino and Alia sped up to meet them. So, real talk, what's Chloe gonna do when she finds out about her, um, what do we call them? Nino asked. Her people? Alia suggested. Yeah, her people. Adrian slowed down. Hmm, she won't be happy, that's for sure. She'll probably be confused, too. She'll need someone to be there for her. Maybe a new group of friends? He nodded with a big grin at Mari, Nino, and Alia. Marinette blinked. Wait. Alia shook her head vigorously. Nope, 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 nope. Nuh uh. No way. Nope. Not gonna happen. Denied. I am disinclined to acquiesce to your request. Adrian gave her a confused look. What does that mean? It means no. Oh, come on, Alia, please. You said she deserves to be shown dignity. Yeah, but that's because I'm a decent person. That doesn't mean I'm ready to make flower crowns and sing kumbaya with her. If I pretend to be her friend, I won't be any better than those punks we just got through telling off. Then don't be her friend. She can just be my friend who hangs out with me, who hangs out with you. Alia groaned. 
Adrian. Please, Alia, Marinette, Nino, can you guys back me up here? Nino pondered on it. Gotta say, the thought of hanging out with Chloe isn't exactly what I'd consider a good time. But I'm willing to give it a go. Adrian smiled at him. Thanks, Nino. I pretty much feel the same way, Mari said. Being a teen and having to deal with everything is hard enough as it is, but if I had to do it without friends, I'd be totally lost. So, though I'm not ready to call her a friend, and I probably won't be for a while, I'm okay with hanging out with her if it's for the greater good. Adrian reached out and held Mari's hand in gratitude. You're so awesome, Marinette. Thank you. This made her blush, but she was able to say, No problem. Seriously? I'm outnumbered? Alia pouted and then turned to Nino and Mari. Don't you guys remember what she did to me? I can't just pretend like that didn't happen. We're not asking you to pretend anything. All you have to do is be there, Alia. That's it. Marinette assured her. Hmm. Alia thought about it. Adrian was concerned. What did Chloe do? I don't want to talk about it right now. Alia quickly responded. She then returned to thinking it over. Hmm. It's been less than a day. What do you mean? Adrian asked. Alia aggressively pointed at him. You've been in our group for less than a day and you're already asking a lot from us. I respected you for standing up to those gross people, but now you're asking us to take in Barbie-colored Medusa? Please, be nice, Alia, Adrian sternly asked. I'll be nice when she is. Come on, Alia. You know doing the right thing has nothing to do with what someone else does or doesn't do. You do the right thing because it's the right thing to do, not because you expect something from someone. Alia blinked in surprise. Wow, Marinette, that's really poetic and wise. Her expression leveled out. You got that from your daily motivational, didn't you? Mari winked at her and stuck out her tongue playfully. Is it that obvious? Yep. Still a good quote, though. So you agree? After inhaling deeply, Alia gave a loud groan. Ugh, fine. We can invite Malibu Medusa to come hang out with us. But if she says no, I'm not insisting. Deal, her friend said in unison. But, Alia held up her index finger. If we're gonna do this, we're gonna do it right. Nino, get the branch. My time has arrived, Nino shouted out triumphantly. No, no branch, guys, no branch, Mari playfully begged. I might be able to find an actual olive tree, Adrian suggested. Oh, dude, that would be sweet, Nino replied. No, Mari continued her protest. The group of friends walked off to the cafeteria, continuing to joke with one another, ready to eat and get fueled up for what's to come. But as for now, that's all there is. There isn't any more.